Fear not, Scranton. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. I'm Pastor Elliot Cook of Jackson Street Baptist Church here on the west side of Scranton, Pennsylvania to remind you of a certain hope that we have in Christ Jesus and how we can trust in his word. The Bible is a powerful, powerful book. We've been studying the importance of God's word to us this week and we're continuing in our message for the believer this morning, uh, for those who are seeking uh, to be more mature in their faith. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse 16 and 17, Tim, uh, Paul writes to Timothy and he says, All scripture is God-breathed. That is that whole idea that it comes from God. It's from him, not from men. But all scripture is God-breathed and is useful. It is useful. It's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. A whole bunch of things pop out at me that I would hope that you would glean from this. First of all, it's God-breathed. It's not from man. It's something from God. He inspired. He he carried them along by his Holy Spirit and caused them to write, even using their own vocabulary and their own mannerisms, he caused them to write just what he wanted them to write so that we can have confidence that it is God's word, not man's. It is useful. The word here is useful. It's not just something to read um, because it's the the religious thing to do. It sounds good in a liturgy uh, to recite something. And so we recite something that sounds lofty, lofty. And some people like it in the King James, you know, and because it's more poetic. It sounds better to their ear. Um, no, no. We don't do it because it sounds good, because it tickles our ears. We turn to God's word because it is useful. It helps us. How do, what is it useful for? It's useful for training. It can train us and teach us and rebuke us and correct us in all righteousness how to live a better life. You want to learn? Be taught by God's word how to live a better life. God, should I have an adulterous affair? Adultery is a sin. Oh, I guess I shouldn't do that. You learn something from God's word. Now, in our society, because we're a Judeo-Christian society, you probably know it's not a good thing to have an adulterous affair. Uh, you probably understand that that's something that will hurt your marriage, hurt your family, destroy you ultimately. You probably know that already. But imagine being in a society that does not understand that adultery is wrong and it's a sin. Uh, imagine being in that society. The Word of God can teach you and train you. Take another example, uh, using the Lord's name in vain. You know, that's something that we do in our society, very common. I hear it all the time, the Lord's name taken in vain. And yet uh, God's Word says not to, to use his name that way, to not uh, take advantage of his name, to call down curses on other people in his name. This is something that we should not ought to do, but we tend to do it. The coarse jesting and, and the, the uh, language that we use is often debased. It's, it's, it's pornographic, uh, borderline uh, pornographic at least, and I've heard it out of men and women, uh, young and old. You know, we have no business talking like that. How do we know that we shouldn't be talking like that? Because it says so in God's word. You know, it teaches us and it trains us. And perhaps you're feeling a little bit rebuked right now because well, you've developed this habit of using the Lord's name in vain. You lust after people that you're not married to. Or perhaps it's the temple of God, our bodies, and how you smoke or you overeat. That's mine. Um, you know, we all have things that we struggle in, and the Word of God can help us and remind us of the things that are right and important, the things we ought to do, the things that we shouldn't do. It should rebuke and, and uh, correct us uh, so that we're no longer heading down that way. Now, I've tried. I've tried, and I'll continue to try uh, to, to put a knife to my throat 
and to stop eating so much, um, to eat better and healthier, because this is the temple of God. God's word tells me that this is the temple of God, and I've got to respect it. I'm a steward of this wonderful gift that God has given me. How dare I abuse it? How dare I endanger the years that God has given to me by overeating and causing my heart to clog up or whatever um, is happening inside me? I have got to get this under control. I'll struggle. I'll struggle. I pray that I can get this under control. I've, I've lost uh, 26 pounds recently, and for that I'm thankful. I've got a long way to go. Pray for me, and I'll pray for you. But I share this weakness of mine with you so that you can understand that just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you don't struggle. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you don't sin. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you know it all. You've got to turn to God's Word. The Scriptures tell us. They're the ones, uh, these words are the ones who, who remind us, who teach us, who encourage us, and train us for righteousness so that we can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You want to do some good work? You want to raise your children right? That's a good work. You want to have a happy and fulfilled marriage? That's a good work. You want to produce something with your life, uh, have a career that means something, that benefits other people? That's a good work, too. There's lots of good works that God has called us to, and there's some things that are upon your heart that you want to do and you haven't seen the success that you desire, well, perhaps it's because you're not turning to God's word. You're not honoring it. You don't believe it. You don't believe it's his word. You believe it's simply the words of men. I'm here to tell you it is not. It is God-breathed. It is sent from him, and it will return to him, and it will accomplish that which he desires it to, to accomplish in this world. He sent it to us to transform us, to renew us, to make us over into the image of Christ. You know, some of you just may need to surrender to him. Maybe that's your need this morning, perhaps to become a Christian so that the word of God can dwell in you richly and transform you. If that's your need, then prayer, prayer goes something like this. Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. I do believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, and I pray that you would forgive me and make me a new creature. I not only ask you to be my Savior, but I ask you to be my Lord as well so that your power can flow through me so that I can be a different person, a better person. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You prayed that prayer, you became a Christian, and now you need the Word of God to, to grow and change, uh, to see success in your marriage, in your family, in your career, in your academics, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Study God's Word. For the baseball player, to the academic, to the homemaker, doesn't matter your walk in life. It will teach you all sorts of things that you need to know on and off the field, in and out of the classroom, in the home and out of the home, doesn't matter. He's developing our character, and this book of truths will help you to develop a godly, godly character. Well, Scranton, I hope that you're no longer in fear and that you are starting to realize that, that as a new believer, as an immature believer, there's room for improvement and that you can grow, and I'm pointing you to God's Word. It's where we all need to start. Um, Fear not, Scranton. The Lord is with you. We love you at Jackson Street Baptist Church. We'd love to see you and study God's Word with you. Uh, when we get back together, I hope to see many of you. If you have the need for a Bible, mention it down below. We'll make sure you get one. If you uh, have other needs, please let us know. We're a spiritual community. We can mentor you and help you and pray for you. If you got a prayer request? Let us know. You like these messages? Let us know. You prayed the prayer? Let us know. We can engage even online with one another. Nothing would please us more and, and nothing would uh, uh, bring uh, God's work in your life out of you and uh, bless you better than, than engaging with a community of the believed. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful day.